Remember our Lord said, pick up your cross. He didn't just say, pick up your cross, because sometimes he got very mm, direct and would say things like, pick up your cross daily and follow me. Conspiracy theories, but when a theory becomes a reality, is it then still a conspiracy theory? Well, no, of course not by definition, but the conspiracy part is actually true. Now, uh, this is somewhat initiated this topic by the release of the John Durham report, looking at the whole Russia collusion hoax, because it was a hoax that they spent years doing and the millions of dollars investigating something that they knew was a hoax. Aside from that, uh, you know, you could say that's treasonous because they tried to interfere with an election. I'm talking about they, the Democrats, tried to interfere with an election, did interfere with an election, the next election, the 2020 election. They used all these powers of the state and all that and everything. But so we're just talking about that today just as sort of a kickoff because this got released a few days ago. And sure enough, it said everything that all the conspiracy theorists on Twitter that were full of misinformation and propaganda and white hate, terrorism, domestic, blah, blah, blah. Well, yeah, it was, turns out it was all true. Matter of fact, we have put together for you a little bit of a list that we're going to look at right now and go through some of the really, shall we say, big conspiracy theories, because there's certainly more than just the big ones, but let's highlight some of these big ones. For example, there were no weapons of mass destruction in Iraq. Hmm. That was the conspiracy theory. They're not really there. Turns out they weren't there. And the conspiracy theory turned out to be a conspiracy fact. The uh, Hillary stole the primary from Bernie. Oh, no, that's not true. Absolutely not. That is it. Turns out it's true. Next conspiracy theory. There's no Russia collusion. Well, as we just talked about at the top of the show, the uh, John Durham report says exactly there was. That conspiracy theory turns out to be a conspiracy fact. What's the next one? COVID. It's complete BS. All of it. The whole thing was a setup. It was to control the people, lock down the economy, redistribute wealth. Blah, blah, blah. That's ridiculous. That's ridiculous. This is all. It's, it, that's a conspiracy theory. Once again, conspiracy fact. All right. The vaccine didn't work. Oh, of course it works. As a matter of fact, remember this. Please get vaccinated. It will protect you against the surging of the Delta variant. Because we have information, people we trust in our lives, it gives us the power uh, to connect those people to accurate information. And especially now uh, with the advent of a vaccine for kids five through 11. You do your job. I'll do mine. Get the vaccine. Get the vaccine. Just get the vaccine. Roll the up and get the vaccine. And tell your friend on Facebook to stick to jewelry. Oh, all those prestigious medical opinions that everything is, yeah, right. The government is the servant of the people in protecting God-given rights. As we all know, they're not very good at that. Uh, but it, none of that is, is the point of this. The point is that that's the structure in which things are supposed to happen. Uh, and that structure is given to us by the church, by Christianity, that every single person matters, that each individual person has rights not from the state, but from God. Now, let's contrast that to communism. Okay, this is an easy contrast. Take everything I just said and turn it completely on its head. Uh, you, your rights are given to you by the state, which means the state can take them away. The state doesn't protect your rights. It just gives them to you and then can willy-nilly decide you don't have this right or you don't have that right. Uh, you know, in every one of these um, uh, tyrannical government things, if you were to move within a country or within the civilization from one point to another, you had to have the permission of the government to travel. You know, you'd show up to the state of, for example, I don't know, was, yeah, Kentucky, Ohio, uh, and in order to cross from one state into another, a little checkpoint, you have to show your papers, or who gave you the papers, who gave you the permission. Why should you have to have somebody's permission to travel from point A to point B if you're not committing a crime? 
uh, or if you haven't committed a crime and you're you know not on the lam or something, you just have freedom of movement. Uh, freedom of movement is one of the uh, one of the gifts of being in heaven. Uh, that, that you are, that you can flitter, <laughs> you can flitter about, you know, wherever it is you want. You're not restricted, uh, you know, in your movement. And that's just one tiny little thing uh, where you have to live. You know, if you've ever been to uh, any of the Eastern European countries and you see any of the uh, that were, you know, behind the Iron Curtain and uh, you notice any of the architecture there's no individuality to it. Uh, there, it's that Soviet-style housing yuck, which just looks awful. It's bland. It's nothing. There's no character to it. Why? Because you don't matter. It's interesting that this same thing carries through and people who want to make a contrast between Nazism and communism. It's kind of a, it's kind of a false dichotomy. I mean, there are some differences. Uh, but, you know, it's like, which serial killer, you know, would you rather have, Ted Bundy or John Wayne Gacy? At the end, you're dead. Uh, so uh, in Hitler's final testimony, uh, he raises the question, he kind of waxes philosophically, badly, but philosophically nonetheless, and he says, uh, you know, the, the individual means nothing. It is the state that matters. Compared to the individual, compared to the state, the individual doesn't matter. Everything that is absent God, and certainly Nazism is, communism is, Nazism is gone uh, from history. I and mean, there's still people claiming to be a little Nazi, but as far as a governing system running a country and dictating people's lives, it doesn't exist anymore. Communism, you know, dictates quite a few, you know, quite a large percentage of the uh, Earth's population. The starting premise is you don't matter. The idea that if a culture doesn't have religious principles that are lived out uh, at its core, that culture begins to sort of fritter away. Um, that's true, oddly enough, even uh, among sort of paganish cultures, uh, the Aztecs, the Mayans, the whole bit, their, their, their world, their cultural world still revolved around uh, religious uh, adherence uh, or adherence to religious principles. And now, granted, it was pagan, and these chop people's heads off and, you know, throw babies into the fire for sacrifice to the, you know, the false gods. And, but nonetheless, the entire civilization revolved around those principles. When you, the reason why religion is so critical to a culture, to a culture's survival, is that it makes the members of the culture, the citizens, look outside themselves to something greater. It appeals to, even in a pagan uh, type religion, it appeals to the sense that we are not the center of the universe, there is something else. And when you begin to lose religion, you've sort of got two things going on here at the same time. The more, there's a reason cultures kind of burn themselves out, empires burn themselves out. And really the top line of that is that they, they get rid of religion or they just start to ignore it. Some of them outlaw it. Once that's happened, it's, it's pretty much lights out. Because if you're not going to worship you know, a god, even a false god or gods, if you're not going to worship them or it, well, what are you going to worship? Well, you're going to worship yourself. Something in the human psychology, something or someone or some being has to be in charge. Absolutely has to be. And if it isn't going to be a god in an atheistic culture, then it's the state. In a capitalist gone wild culture, it's the individual. I want to get as much money as I possibly can. I want to dictate the, ter the terms of my own life. That's a joke, but you know that, that's how people, many people live their lives. Like money is the only thing that matters. And somehow, as long as they have money, they have control. Yeah, they have control probably more so than other people who don't have uh, you know, the, the material means to be able to uh, control 
the same number of things, but nobody has control over his or her own life. No matter how wealthy you are, you can get cancer. No matter how wealthy you are, you can get in a car accident. No matter how wealthy you are, somebody can walk up and pop you. So you don't have control, you just have more control. Nonetheless, that's a psychology that human beings have. Somebody, something is the controlling agent of the civilization, of the empire. And if it isn't God or the gods or panoply of gods, then it's going to be somebody else. Thank you for watching The Michael Voris Show. If you'd like to watch the entire episode, please head over to churchmilton.com and sign up as a premium member. If you need to sign up to become a premium member, go to churchmilton.com forward slash go premium.